For many other ways to conserve energy, send for our free booklet. Write Conservation, Edison, Post Office Box 800, Rosemead, California. Meanwhile, make every kilowatt count. There's no question about that. Would you please fill out the uh, winning entries? That's about what it sounded like. And uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of our callers today will get a chance to do that. Uh, it'll be interesting to get their opinions. The American Music Awards, which will be on next Saturday night on ABC TV. It'll be taped in this time zone. It'll be on between uh, 10 and 11.30. And uh, we got Glenn Campbell and uh, Olivia Newton-John and uh, oh Aretha, boy, and Franklin. Aretha Franklin. And uh, who are some of the people that are going to be uh, the presenters, Dick? Well, you'll see uh, in the performance area, you'll see all of those people perform along with the Ohio players, uh, the Captain and Tennille. Uh, as presenters, it's it's a raft of people. That's my my people. problem there, Bill, when I start reeling off who'll be there, is that I will leave somebody out, and that's always embarrassing. Right. There are 30 different presenters. But it's going to reflect uh, the various forms of music. Now, Dick, you have been a, a person who, in many years, you're in your 24th year on American Bandstand, and many years ago, it was a problem getting a black performer on television. It was a problem getting a black performer exposed. And you're the man who gave very heavy exposure at a time when it wasn't popular. We, we never had any problem getting television performers on, Bill, because the music that was so uh, necessary for that music was black. Mm -hmm. It was probably the greatest black platform for music ever. But uh, I know what you're referring to. You're talking about the present scene now? The present scene and a recent article, and again, we refer to a, to Billboard. There was an article written by a Billboard reporter named Jean Williams, and uh, she interviewed Dick Griffey, who is a top black promoter here in Los Angeles and who has sent Stevie Wonder all over the country. And he made the accusation in print that white f fans of rock and roll music, white teenagers, do not go to concerts involving black crossover artists like a Gladys Knight or Stevie Wonder. I mean, in other words, artists that they would buy in a record store, but he would, they would not go, to, let's say, to the Forum to see these type people perform because of racism. And I find that a quite a wild charge. It's probably a wild charge in the long run, Bill, but there may be an essence of truth in it. And I don't like to, I don't like to refer to black and white problems. We have misunderstandings or a fear of the unknown that always surround us. Have you never been someplace where you felt out of place? Have Absolutely. you never been in an all-black party and be the only white person there and not feel comfortable? Not that the people weren't nice to you, but uh, the, the feel of the room was different, the conversation was the, the dress was different. We all want to be comfortable, and that's whether you're black or you're white. There may be an essence of truth there. I don't like to think it's a prejudice. You think I'm, there's a fear, uh, there's a violent sphere too, because you're different? No, I, I think that's pretty much gone. I think we're, we're gradually learning in social circumstances how to get together. You know, I went to a party the other night where I was in the minority. Mm -hmm. It was a birthday party for uh, Stevie Wonder's mother. Right. I was, first of all, I was very honored to be there because I think maybe there might have only been a couple of dozen white people in this group of 230 some odd. And it took me about two minutes to become comfortable. And that's weird for a guy who's been around mostly minorities all his life. But uh, there I was. I mean, I was in the minority, and I had to take a second in a familiar restaurant to get used to being surrounded by all blacks. And then pretty soon we all forgot about it. That's right. You're all people. So it just takes a little while. Absolutely. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi, Bill. Hi, Dick. Hi. What's your Hi. name? Suzette. Okay, Suzette. Okay, I've got three questions for Dick. The Fire first away. one is... What do you think about the sudden rise of Bruce Springsteen from cult hero to rock superstar with just two Time and Newsweek covers? Well, I think that the Time and the Newsweek covers, those things are obviously well planned. Honey. You may not be too familiar with public relations, but those were timed out perfectly as part of a giant campaign. As to a talent, I don't think he's, he's matchable at the moment. I think he's the first new exciting thing we've had in a long time. Uh, do you feel that because he has such great relations, public relations, and not like a lot of talent that his public relations got him where he is? I think his public relations have been extraordinarily good. I don't know who does it, but... Columbia uh, Records helped, too. <laughs> well, I'm sure a, a great deal of time, effort, and money was spent in promoting him, but I don't agree with you on, on the talent basis. I think anybody who sells as many records as he does, and he says extraordinarily well in concerts, has an appeal. Obviously, that talent doesn't appeal to you. No. What's your third question? My third one is, um, you were talking earlier of the commercial impact on people. Well, before when Elton John wasn't a really big superstar, he did really good music, but now he's beginning to get criticism that he's too commercialized. Yeah. He isn't as good, but I think he's great. But he what is, do you feel about it? He is one of the most commercial artists I've ever met in my life, and I, I say that as a, as a compliment. 
I like people who take care of business. I like people who do promotions. I like people who wake up in the morning, go to the top 40 radio station, and join the disc jockey. I like people who take out ads. I like people who costume their show, who do a good show, who entertain the people. I think that's taking care... Professional entertainers. ...of the business part of the show. Mm -hmm. May I ask you one question? Yeah. If you were voting... For your favorite male singer, would it be John Denver, Elton John, or Neil Sedaka? Elton John all the way. Elton right. John all the way. We'll Richard see what Ron happens Scott. Saturday all night, right. and we'll meet you on the Yellow Brick Road. Thank you. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi, Dick. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. What's uh -huh. your name? My name is Althea. Hi, Althea. Okay. Uh, my main question for uh, one to ask Dick, well, see, I'm, I'm one of those super, super Elvis fans. And my all my main time is spent uh, collecting and going down to Vegas twice a year when he's there. This is a mysterious I, melody that many millions have. <laughs> yes. Right. And I see a little close to maybe 12 to 15 shows every time I go down. Yeah. Or something like that. Were you there last summer? Pardon me? Were you there last summer when he was uh, unfortunately not able to appear? I got there just as he left. That was a terrible experience. We yeah. were performing at the Thunderbird at that time, and there were right. several hundred young people who'd come from England, saved and saved. All of the fan club got over here, exactly. and they could only make the one show, and it was just a disastrous oh. experience for him. But In any I, case, I'm sorry, what was your question? But anyway, I got there for December. I went in December when Elvis was How here. was the show? Oh, fantastic. No, 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 be very objective now. No, you're a, you're really. a fan. Was he as good as he had been in other times that you'd seen him? He was even better, I think. I'm delighted to hear. He was fantastic. My mom and I went up, and her, we saw three shows, one on Friday and two that Saturday. All right, a lot of, lot of people say that he's slowing down, he's blubbery looking, he sloughs the show. Do you buy any of that criticism at all? No. You're still right. a performer. Elvis is tough. No, All right, I want to. May I ask there. you? A, may I ask you a question? Yes. Uh -huh. If you were uh, casting a ballot for favorite female vocalist, would it be Olivia Newton-John, Helen Reddy, or Linda Ronstadt? Mm. I guess Helen Reddy. Helen Reddy. Mm -hmm. So you're a woman's liber. Oh, not no? really. I am a woman. <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot for your comments. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi, this is Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi. Do you remember last week I called Donnie, and I spoke to Donnie, and he told me that he looked like the $6 million man? Yeah, you're talking to Lee Majors now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Onward and upward. And I have a question for you, Dick. Yeah. When was the first time the Osmonds won American Bandstand? Well, let me see. They had appeared with Andy Williams many, many times, and Mike Kerb had just brought them over to MGM Records, and it was their very first rock and roll type record. Was that One Bad Apple time? Yeah. Help me, Bill. Uh, one Bad Apple was the first big record that broke for them. I think that was the That's one. That's right. I, I believe if it, it was either that one or one before. Uh, I believe the first, now the first gold record they ever had, the first number one record they had when they were over at MGM with Mike Curb was One Bad Apple, and they, of course, had Yo-Yo and a lot of hits yeah. following. In any case, it and was... And I remember when they were commenting, hey, it sounds like the Jackson 5. Yeah. There was a lot of criticism at that time that they were the white Jackson 5, when right. indeed they had been doing an act that... Uh, well, set Las Vegas on its ear for many years before then, but that was, it was way, way back. Let me ask you a question. Okay. If you were voting for your favorite group, and in this particular category, Donnie and Marie are not in it, but if you were voting for your favorite group, would it be the Eagles, Earth, Wind, and Fire, or Tony Orlando and Don? Tony Orlando and Don. Tony, why? I think they're really good. I watch this show all the time. You okay. know what? Thank you, man. Thanks an awful lot for calling. Thanks very much for your call. Okay, thank you. You know, the one I want you to find out, if we can ask the next listener, yeah. is the song of the year, because that one, I don't think there's any doubt about the winner. I, I'm, I don't allow myself to we say on the air what mine are. We are going to get to that, and who is our next caller? Hello? Yes, this is Jane. Hey, Jane. I'd like to ask Mr. Clark, will uh, Jack and Wilson be doing it more recording? I'm sorry, could you repeat your question, please? Uh, would Jack and Wilson be doing any more recording? I have great fears that Jackie will be a long time before he records. He is, he's not in the best of health now. We're all praying a lot and hoping that things will get better, but I can't give you a, an encouraging report. Thank you very much for your call, sir. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hello, Bill. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is the first, and I want you to listen to a few words of song and see what you think, will you? All right. Make it quick. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, we I think we got enough of the chorus. Hello. I'm not sure she can hear us, Bill. But you know that. Okay, the, I tell you what. Uh, we, tell you, why don't you? Uh, hopefully, she'll catch the radio. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much for uh, for your call and. Uh, well, you, you know, know what's, what, you know what's so hard what happened there? It's very difficult. You know, a lot of people come to our office frequently, and it happens more frequently at music offices. I, I say, I've written a song or recorded a song. And one of the things that you've got to do when you're going to display your wares is they go into a studio and get the best sound you can and get some help. If you know a friend who has a guitar, have him play guitar behind or a piano, or better yet, a trio with some drum. Uh, get a little presentation going. I can't. I, first of all, I couldn't hear. We that. couldn't hear her, so that wasn't fair. And of course, you know, we had uh, Lester Sill and Danny Davis in here a couple of weeks ago. They must and, have had ideas. Oh, and they had all kinds of ideas. I think if you're going to try to make it as a professional, you've got to act like a professional. You've got to get the right tape. You've got to go to the right people, and that's where it's at. And of course, a lot of it's guts. Yeah, There's no I'm sure it's like any other business. It's part of the presentation. If you're going to be an attorney, you get yourself an office and you put a shingle out and you have a desk to begin that's with. That's where it's at. And if you're going to be in the radio business you get yourself commercials <laughs> and here's one what a clue <laughs> if you, we had donnie and marie osmond on last week and they appeal to a lot of people and i know in the age group of seven to ten they're right there and if you're the parent of a seven to ten year old here's the opportunity to do something very special that your child will appreciate for years to come that's in addition to taking them to a donnie and marie taping take advantage of this special introductory subscription offer to cricket magazine it's written especially for seven to ten year olds and there's no better time than now to help your child discover the pure enjoyment and pleasure of good reading. Cricket is a monthly package of fun, fantasy, and real-life fascination. It's full of laughter and knowledge and all the things that excited and challenged young minds. Every month, Cricket brings a parade of could-have-been and might-have-been someday stories. Page after page of adventure and history and magic tricks and contests and poems and puzzles and dozens of other delicious odds and ends of fact and fancy that children love. Of. But best of all, as a parent, you'll appreciate the quality and the excellence of Cricket. It's written and edited by some of the finest authors writing for children today. Its pages glow with vivid drawings by leading illustrators. Cricket is truly a rare example of just how good a children's magazine can be. To encourage you to find out for yourself about Cricket's very special qualities, the publishers of Cricket are making this very special, no obligation trial subscription offer. The next nine monthly issues of Cricket for only Get this, Dick, $8.97. And there's no need to send money now. Cricket will send the first issue to your home, and if it doesn't convince you and your young reader that Cricket is the very best children's magazine around today, then there's no obligation. The first issue is yours to keep, and you are free to cancel your subscription and not owe a penny. To order your special nine-month subscription to Cricket for only $8.97, call this toll-free number now, 800-241-8444. That's 800-241-8444. Tell the operator you want to order Cricket. Remember, this is a toll-free number. Cricket pays for the call. The number again is 800-241-8444. That's 800- 800-241-8444. Right now at KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark, it's 324. Come along, sing the song, people, now's the time. I have this flower shop and a man who comes by for Snapdragons told me about a discount United Airlines is offering, 30% off. Now's the time for vacation. With this Freedom Fair, I'll save more now than in the summer. 30% off? That's a lot of Snapdragons. People, now's the time. I'm a baker. My specialty, little gingerbread men. But I also love vacations. I hear United lets me save 30% right now, so I say now's the time for vacation. 30% off? That's a lot of gingerbread men. Save 30% on round-trip coats with United's Freedom Fair. Any day, almost anywhere. Seats are limited, so call United or your travel agent. The friendly skies of your land, United Airlines. Um, save to 79 cities from Los Angeles. United's Freedom Fair does not apply to travel within the state or to Canada. Different discounts to Hawaii. Ask United or your travel agent about restrictions. Michael Jackson, how about tomorrow morning? Hello there, I'm Michael Jackson. When next we meet, we'll start the week with a look at the prospect and likelihood of national no-fault automobile insurance. Congressman Lionel Van Dillen, the author of the bill, will explain. Doris Day will explain um, the change in her life, her image and her attitude towards the world. 
Attorney Donald Ricketts has filed suit to establish a one-year moratorium on court proceedings in medical malpractice cases. We'll meet him and doctors and insurance men with some contrary views. But for whatever views you have, contrary or otherwise, join us anytime between 9.05 and 1 p.m. right here on Talk Radio 79, KABC, Los Angeles. He's the best, Michael Jackson, 9.05 tomorrow. And, of course, it's going to be very interesting to hear the interview with uh, Doris Day, mm. who sold a few records. <laughs> yes, indeed. She's written a book, hasn't she? She's written a book, and that's what she's probably going to talk about, I'm sure, among other things. And uh, que sera, sera, whatever will be, <laughs> will be. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KABC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi, Bill. Yeah. This is Tony. Hey, Tony. I've been listening to your program. I find it very interesting. Well, thank you. I'd like to say hi to uh, Dick Clark. He's hi, Tony. He's right here. Uh, I wanted to uh, make a comment about uh, a little thing that you said earlier about uh, Stevie Wonder's agent saying about uh, people won't go... The promoter, Dick Griffey, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They won't go see some of the concerts that uh, yet they buy the albums and uh, things like that. Mm-hmm. Well... You know, I'm a musician myself, and I've played with a lot of black uh, musicians and a lot of white musicians. I'm Mexican, and uh, I uh, I often go to the concerts, and I, I find that uh, if you go see, uh, like, uh, a, a white band or something like that, you have a mixed crowd. But yet, I went to see James Brown one time, and the crowd was, I'd say, 98% black. Uh, I found that uh, you do have a kind of a different feeling. I don't. I don't think there. Uh, for a while. Yeah, it's the same thing, Tony. I was reflecting on before. I think that's the next step for us. I think we're going to find that we'll have integrated audiences as music has become amalgamated for the very first time this year. And it's interesting. We're talking about it and looking over the the sheet on the American Music Award. This is the very first time we've ever had any white acts in the soul category. Black people are now accepting white people singing black music. So the next thing that will happen undoubtedly will be that there'll be more white people going to more black concerts. It's uh, just part of our growth, I think. It doesn't alarm me too much. Are you a heavy record buyer? I, I buy records once in a while, not that much, but... Uh... What is your favorite single that came out uh, 1975? If you were voting, would you vote for Captain and Tennille, That Will Keep Us Together? Or would you vote for Glenn Campbell's Rhinestone Cowboy or Elton John's Philadelphia Freedom? I tend to like Elton John better. Elton John, Philadelphia Freedom, a very, very big record. Okay, I thank you very, very much for your call. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi, Dick. This is Dan. Hi, Dan. I have two quick questions for you. The first is, uh, I've just finished a demo, and it's turned out so well, surprisingly for me, that uh, I'd like to know, how do you go about finding a producer, you know, which is kind of a far-out question? Well, this, this is a question that undoubtedly Bill and his friends answered, answered in another broadcast, but very quickly, the best thing to do is find a record company that's interested in your talents, and they will undoubtedly have a producer in mind. Sure. Okay. That's exactly right. Now, if you're a writer, let me mention the, the song registration service here in town that's run by Helen King. Right. I caught the last part of that program, and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> okay. Also, you should go down to the... Uh, they have a workshop every Wednesday night at the Improvisation Club where, again, artists can showcase their, their talent. Now, is that the Lynn Chandler one? That's the one right at 8162 uh, Melrose Avenue. And, of course, also there's a magazine called Songwriter Magazine, which can be very, very helpful for songwriters. And I think you should read the trades. Okay. I think it's vitally important to read the trades because the trades at least familiar will familiarize you with the people who make the major decisions in music. And also it'll acquaint you with the records that are currently very hot and the artists that are hot. Okay. And the second question is this. I've recently been turned on to... Uh, Aaron Andre Crouch, who is a gospel singer, mm -hmm. and I just got his new album, and it's fantastic to the point where I think that the light could easily release two or three of those as top-selling singles, and yet they don't. Well, I think the reason why they don't, it's an interesting question. Are you talking about Lexicon Music out in the right. San Fernando Valley, Ralph Carmichael's right. company? Exactly. Andre Crouch considers himself, first and foremost, a Jesus rock performer. He is not going into the pop music spectrum. He doesn't want to be considered, quote-unquote, as a major pop recording star. He's primarily into religious music, and if it crosses pop, that's fine. But he doesn't want the direction to be popular music. But his songs are dynamite. <laughs> they certainly are. He's a top-notch performer. I've seen him perform. He does a very good job, and, and I thank you very much for your call. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio. You know who you're talking to. Yes, this is Rebecca, and I want to talk. I want to say hi to both you and Dick. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. And I'm over 40, mm -hmm. but teenagers in the house. But I just want to back up that girl's statement about Elvis Presley. I was lucky enough to get in without a reservation, and he was super terrific. 
When did you see him? I saw him uh, December the 17th. That's terrific. I, I didn't have a reservation, but I went down after they, you know, the door, and I said, I got to get in. Somebody said, you got to tip heavy, but I didn't. And tears streamed down my face. He was so good. Well, you know, that makes me happy. Oh, because my when, God. Because when we he were there, terrific. there were so many disappointed people. There were a lot of very strange rumors flying around the town. That, well, uh, he hadn't felt well. My doctor knows him. Yeah. And he said that he went through a period of not feeling well. Yep. And he did look 10 or 12 pounds overweight, but I liked that in him. Yeah, Dick's got a couple of rumors he wants to kick around with you. What's that? No, no, I don't spread no. rumors. No, 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 he wants to tell you. I think the ba basic problem in terms of rumors is the obesity problem. It's an obesity problem. That is his major problem. He and perspired. it could very well also be that he overworked. He perspired a lot, and I was lucky enough to get one of his scarves, and I go around wearing it, and <laughs> kids laugh at me. Well, Even look, my boyfriend yeah. thinks I'm silly. I got a picture on my wall, and I go around with an Elvis scarf around my neck. Hey, there is there's <laughs> the nice thing about the music business. There's a little bit of something there for everybody, and you can be a staunch Presley fan or an Elton John fan, and nobody, but nobody should criticize you for you it. You know what? Let me just tell you this funny thing. I was so excited that my mouth even got dry on my lips, and I reached in my makeup kit to put on my lipstick, and I put on green eyeshadow instead. And I <laughs> oh, that's funny. I love it. <laughs> that's I thought they were going to die. This man hit his face on the tablecloth, and his wife said, what's the matter with you? And he said, look at her. And I said, oh, my God. Your love kids, me your kids are going to love you for it. Thanks for love calling. Love me tender, love me true. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio. We're talking about everybody in the music business with a man who knows them all, Dick Clark. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm an Elvis fender. That was funny. <laughs> you're the, the green eye shadow? <laughs> Uh -huh. Right. It's quite a my picture. Name, my name is Sherry, and I just want to let Dick Clark know that we love him and appreciate all he's ever done for the rock and roll business. Sherry, bless your heart. I appreciate that call. I was in New York and going to high school when you were on American Bandstand in Philadelphia, and we used to race home every night to watch you. Well, that was Justin part of and a... Bob and Pat and all of them. Part of Americana. I haven't mentioned it to Bill, and it's inappropriate now because it's a while away. But we've I put together a book called Good Old Rock and Roll Memories or something. I, I don't really know what the title will be, Bill. And it when will it be coming out? Comes out the fall of this year. It'll be out uh, fall of 1976, and it'll bring back a lot of memories for a lot of people. 1955 to 1965, when it all started. <laughs> And you were there when it started, I'll oh, tell you that. Yes. Thank you very much for your call. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with all kinds of eyeshadow. This is Joyce of Burbank. Uh, could you please tell me what's happened to Paul Revere and the Raiders? Well, let's see. Paul lives in Las Vegas right now. He works in Las Vegas, Reno, and Tahoe with great regularity. Mark Lindsay is no longer with the group. Mark lives here in Los Angeles working as a single performer. And there are uh, a brand new group of Raiders versus the ones you knew from yesteryear when they were on our Where the Action Is show. But he's still very active. He's not making as many records as he used to. Oh, I see. I've been a fan of theirs for 11 years, and I love them. Well, the best thing to do is if you get up to Las Vegas, uh, check to see if they're working there at the time. That's where they spend most of their time. Thanks very much for your call. Dick, what about uh, Las Vegas? You're going to be going in there momentarily. Yeah, I spend uh, two months a year of my life there, Bill. It was an interesting experience two years ago. We put together a show that is a little bit about what very often people call in about. Tell me about the old days. I don't like the deal in the old days exclusively because, you know, we've been talking about the American Music Awards. That's today. I figure you've got to live with today, not yesteryear. But it was such an extraordinary success and gave me such a warm feeling. I did a show for a former employee of mine, Richard Nader, in New York. He's the guy who does all the rock and roll revival shows. And I said, Richard, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be remembered as living in the past. But I did because he needed some support for a show he had. And it was the warmth in the room, not the physical warmth, but the emotional warmth, and the good old days that we rolled around in for a couple hours was such fun and so invigorating that I started doing this thing in Las Vegas. We broke a... A 26-year house record this year. So we're going back again July and August, and uh, you got to come up, because it's a very strange experience. Now, you're moving out of the T-Bird, though, right? You, what hotel will no, you we in? stay there. Well, you're going to be at the T-Bird. Yeah, I've, I've taken over the main room, which seats uh, about 750 people, and we've turned it into the largest lounge in town. There mm. don't serve any food. Things just, are humming. Uh, just one of those yaha crazy come laugh and remember the old days. When now. will you be there again? All the month of July and all of August. Mm, that's fantastic. Okay, this is Bill Moran with Dick Clark on KBC Talk Radio. Yes, this is Steve from Culver City. Hey, Steve. And uh, I'd like to first thank Dick for uh, all he's done for the oldies. I feel a little guilty after his last remarks about the oldies. But no, no, no. It's, hey, I've gotten over that. You know, Neil Sedaka wouldn't sing the old songs for a long time. Uh, Paul Anka wouldn't for a long time. It's course, crazy. It's part of your life. Of course, you love to do them when you, had it, when you have a current hit. 
Well, yeah, yeah that's, that's true, true. too. Right? The, the, what, what everybody worries about is being classified as back then and not now, but uh, I've gotten over that paranoia. Well, I, I really enjoy them. I wanted to just ask three quick questions and some things I've been looking for, some information. Yeah. Uh, the first one was, you have a, an oldie show on another station that yeah. kind of goes through the past. I really enjoy that, especially the interviews and some of the groups that only maybe had one hit that are kind of forgotten. We take a different premise every time. We do three hours a week, and there's a lot of research that goes into it. It's uh, been on a couple of years now. Right. Is there any way that those could be available to the public? No, I'm sorry. Uh, they're not for sale. There's nothing to preclude you recording them at home for your own use, though. I would imagine. Uh, how many? How many are there all together? Oh, in the series? we've done two, three years worth of them now. Uh -huh. uh, I do a hundred and whatever is three times fifty-two weeks a year. You do a three-hour show, don't you? In this in this market, it's in three here hours. It's played three different hours on three different nights, but most places play it three hours in a row. Hundred and fifty some a year we do. Okay, I think those are really great. And the last two questions, real quick, are: Is there any place that's a, that sells or that has available the old hit list that you use, the charts? So you can see uh, some of these old songs and possibly that you might have forgotten. There is a book that was published based on the Billboard best-selling charts. Help me here, Bill. Oh, that's Who right. Did it? Um, uh, uh, oh, that's embarrassing. I've now. got to fire back my memory, but there are there are two or three books around that do, you know, the history of the Billboard charts, and there are other surveys that are out, but I cannot if recall you, the name of the book. If you call the Billboard office or my office tomorrow, somebody there will give you the name of the, the fellow who wrote them, and they are available. Okay, it's a great, last one. Uh, great research. A uh, last one real quick. Some artists, when they start out, have one name and then change their name when they become a little bit more prominent or they don't like their original name. And one of the names that we, some friends of mine uh, and I heard that were driving us crazy was Skip and Flip. Did they change their name to something else and go on to be more successful? Skip and Flip divided forces and became the Hollywood Argyles. One of the guys became the Hollywood Argyles and the other fellow left. Now what I've got to do is torture myself for the rest of the day and pull out the real names. Okay, well, thank you very much, and I, I really appreciate the job you do with the oldies because I, I really enjoy that. May I ask you one fast question? Sure. If you were voting for Record of the Year, would it be Love Will Keep Us Together by Captain and Tennille, Philadelphia? Alfia Freedom, Elton John, or Rhinestone Cowboy, Glenn Campbell? Um, I hate to say this because it's been played so much, but I, I would say love will keep us together. Okay, I, uh, I, I happen to agree with you in this particular you, case. You concur with all of the major music publications, but the thing that's going to be fascinating to me is what the general public says come Saturday night. Yeah, and we will sure find out. So, on Neil Sedaka, this is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi, Dick. This is Barbara from Los Angeles. Yes, Barbara. I was wondering, I've got two quick questions. I was wondering, what do you think of the new album by Cat Stevens, Numbers? In all honesty, I haven't heard enough of it to make an appraisal. I don't have the whole album at home. I usually take them home and listen to them. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm not qualified to give you an appraisal. Well, take my word for it. Take it home and listen to the whole thing. All right, I fair mean, enough. I it's phenomenal. What okay. was the second question? Uh, the second one was on Elvis. I was wondering, on American Bandstand, you'll have specials. Yeah. You know, uh, for different people. How come you've never had a Nova special? We have in the past. It's not easy to uh, to get all the help that you need to put a special together. Uh, the photographs and the footage and all are not as readily available with Elvis. And the last time we did them was on a birthday occasion. Probably We'll probably get around to it again. It's a good oh, idea. Oh, that'll be wonderful. And also, one thing for you, Dick. I'd just like to tell you what a fantastic job you've done over the years, and I hope you keep on doing the same thing. He will. Oh, well, I sure hope so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your call. You know, it's kind of interesting, too, what's happening when you talk about oldies. Frankie Avalon had a hit back in the 50s with Venus. Now it's a hit again as a disco record. Yeah. I understand Bobby Hebb has just put Sunny. out Sunny as a disco record. And as a matter of fact, it was on a record review of yesterday. Hey, there's an interesting thing. Yesterday, yeah. on record review on the bandstand, which has been going, I like the beat, and it's easy to dance to for 24 years now. Same premise. Yeah. The two songs were Sunny and the old, that old black magic. And oh. do you know the two young people who judged the records had never heard either one. of either song? It's man. brand new material. I wonder if anybody's heard of Babyface, the old Al Jolson song. <laughs> Isn't that wild? It's right. You That's know, it's my just, favorite thing. <laughs> it's really amazing. They're going back. They're going back to the 30s. I it's play just, that dumb record over and over again. I just love it to death. It's amazing. Well. You know what Future Shock is, don't you? Well, we <laughs> Future Shock is the 21st century getting here too soon. It's the events of the world happening at such a fast pace that once you've digested the effects of one, you're hit with another. The world around us seems disoriented and chaotic, and you're not alone in feeling this way. We, uh, we suffer from Future Shock because we don't understand what's happening around us. It's for this reason that you should read The National Observer. The Observer is a weekly publication that helps us understand this chaotic world we live in. With articles 
articles that explain all of the events of the world going around us and re relates them to how these events will affect you personally from a political, economic, and a social point of view. The Observer is a beautifully written publication. It's clear, it's concise, it's understandable and entertaining, and it puts the world we live in into a proper perspective. You can now get 26 weeks of the National Observer for only $6. That's just 23 cents a week. We spend more than that, you know, to get to work every day. I, I know I do. And if you call now, the National Observer will send you a free a free something just for subscribing. I imagine it's a free issue of the magazine. It's a 248-page book containing advice and practical solutions to problems that we face every day. This book normally sells for $2.95. Yes, it's, yet it's yours free for subscribing to The Observer Now. The book will show you how to save money on telephone toll charges. Hmm. It'll show you how to save money on auto repairs. That's something we all got to know. I'll tell you that. It will tell you what to do to avert a disaster if a fire starts in your home. And hundreds of other pieces of information that will help you in your everyday life. To start your subscription coming for the National Observer and to receive your 248-page book, all for only $6, call this number immediately. It's toll-free, so you don't have to pay for the phone call. Call 800-228-1776. That's 800-228-1776. 26 weeks of the National Observer plus your free 248-page book just for making a phone call. Call 800 800- 228-1776. Hello, Elmer Dills. Hello, how are you? Elmer Dills follows at 410 this afternoon. Why don't you say hi to everybody? Hello, Hello how, are how are you? Nice to see you. Thank you nice to see you. You were okay. inspecting his beverage, were you? I'm inspecting his beverage. <laughs> Anything exciting today that uh, we should tell everybody? Just, Just a preview? Just, Just you. Me. That's all you really need. Elmer Dills between 410 and 6 o'clock, following Dick Clark right here on uh, KBC Talk Radio. And uh, we sure will be listening. And we've got a lot of people who want to talk to Dick. The lines are red hot. But before we go back to the lines, we're going to sell something else. I'm with Griffey's. I'm with Griffey's. I'm with Griffey's in what is considered Griffey's most important department, TV sales. I'm in the most important division of Griffey's, service. Service? Griffey's most important division. Divi... <laughs> it's a room in the back of the store is what it is. Now, TV sales? Ha-ha! <laughs> 19-inch color portables with a new set guarantee, two years picture tube, one year parts, 90 days labor, and you can buy a Griffey's late model hotel portable, color, 19-inch, for about half the price of a new set. They sell themselves. Right. So who needs you? You. Now, service, that's me. And I put them in shape. Griffey's Service, one of the biggest service departments west of the Mississippi. Oh, they hardly need any service. They come out of major hotels. They're hardly you. Right. So, who needs you? I write your paycheck. You... Are you Bill Griffey? That's right. I'm Jack Griffey. Hey, Griffey. Griffey, you old rascal. Ah, <laughs> oh, Griffey, uh, boy. Ah, oh, you old rascal. Write my paycheck. Okay. Three Griffey locations on Valley Boulevard in Alhambra, at Nordoff and Sepulveda in the San Fernando Valley, and in Lawndale on Hawthorne Boulevard. We're going to go back to the phones in a minute. But uh, we've got a lot of people who want to know if they want tickets to a taping of... Uh, Donnie and Marie Osmond. Is that what the giant sack full of goodies is? That's on? what it is. And <laughs> Dick has pulled a couple, and I've pulled one. So let's fire it away. Dick, what's, who's the first winner? I have one here from Diane Korn of Gardena, California. Who's oh. yours? Okay, I've got a young lady. I guess it's a young lady named... Carrie Marshall, who lives out in Anaheim, California, so she wins two. Only two. Only two tickets per winner. Boy, and not, can you believe that you dug in there? I, you watched me and I watched you. We both looked away, just plucked them out, blindfolded sort of deal. Not literally blindfolded, but not looking. And I got another one from Anaheim. I'll be darned. I got a Penny Murata. M-U-R-A-T-A. That's it. Those are the three winners. Again, the three winners, and I hope you're listening. Penny Murata out in Anaheim, and we've got uh, Carrie Mitchell out in Anaheim, and we've got uh, Diane Korv in at Gardena, and you're all going to be going to a taping of Donnie and Marie Osmond's show. Now remember, Donnie and Marie Osmond are going to be doing 13 shows in the series initially, so you're going to hear from ABC Television within the next two weeks. You won't hear within the next two days, so don't bombard the KBC with phone calls. When we say you're a winner, you're a winner, and you'll be going to the show to a taping of Donnie and Marie Osmond. Right now on KBC Talk Radio, it's 346 with a reminder that next Sunday between 2 and 4 o'clock, We've got a personality who will be sitting right here in this particular studio who will be one of the co-hosts of the American Music Awards next week, one of the hottest female singers in the business, glorious, glamorous, 
Olivia Newton-John. And boy, does she sell records. You dirty old man. You mean you're going to put that lovely creature right here and right stare here. at her for two hours? Two hours. It's you're a... no, you may not even talk. I, I just, I, I probably won't. <laughs> We're back to the phones. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Yeah, Dick, uh, I was uh, up in Japan recently and uh, listening to some of the rock music they got up there. Have you heard any of that stuff? In all honesty, very little of it. Well, the last a, time I was there a, was a long time ago. I, I heard that most of it is kind of unusual but they've got uh, this one uh, gal up there she's kind of like a japanese version of uh, linda ronstadt her name i think is uh, em emiko emiko koheru Imaki. great great uh, singer just uh, a lot like linda ronstadt she's uh, uh, but uh, she sing in english uh some songs are in english some are in japanese but she's really good she's got a a backup a, a backup group called uh thing called the omonkos and it's really good you think it would sell here in the united states i don't know what's her name again her name is, em is Emiko Kohiroimaki. I made a note. I thank you very much yeah. for the tip. Anyway, the other question I wanted to ask you was, um, what uh, what do you think is the impact of uh, of uh, Negroes on the uh, on the pop music scene? Oh, I, uh, that's been written about so many times. Uh, between do you, think, uh, do you think Negroes make better musicians? Oh, I, that's a that's a ridiculous thing to say, but the, certainly the culture of the United States in the music world has been borrowed from country music and black music, without a doubt. Yeah, the well, amalgamation you, of those two gave birth to that thing called rock and roll. Do you do you like Negroes? <laughs> yeah, I, some of my best friends are colored people. One, <laughs> of course I do. Yeah. I like Negroes. <laughs> what is your favorite soul performer who is a male singer? Would you vote for James Brown, Smokey Robinson, or Barry White? Well, I think Barry White. Uh, I think uh, I like all Negroes, but I think Barry White's just a really great Negro. I think his music says it all. Love's theme, and thank you very much for your call. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hello. Hi. Richard. Richard? Yes, Richard. It's Paul Dick. Harrison. Who? It's Paul Harrison? No. Oh, it's Freddie. That's right. Crazy Fred. <laughs> How are you? Strikes again. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You sound just like another guy I know, Fred, in that moment I flashed on Paul. You did? Yeah. How are you? All right. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Well, you, know why I listen, you know why I listen to the station? I'm not no offense with Bill. I'm listening to the whole show, but I listen to sports talk, you know, when I'm home, and I listen to... You know what a sport fan I am, a right? A man is a man is Boston, an absolute Celtic man. And Red Sox and... Oh, yeah? Hell, yeah. He, he would come out all last summer and do an update on the sports news every night before you start the show. What is your question, sir? My question is, uh, well, I want to answer something for you. Oh, by the way, that... the skip and flip thing. Gary Paxton is flip. That's right. Who's the Gary? Other... Who's the other guy, Freddie? Um... Oh, boy. No, that's where I fell yeah, apart. Yeah, I, I can't remember remember him. This, by the way, if we didn't identify this man, is Freddie Cannon. Freddie Boom Boom. Yeah. One of the best. You know, Bill, I, I want to say something. I, I heard Donnie and Marie call yeah. before, and I heard a few people, and some people on the show, station said something about Dick. But let me just go on and say something that's part of the past or whatever you want to talk about. The future said something, and the past is going to say something. Uh, I don't want to classify myself as the past. But that man has helped an awful lot of people that's sitting right there with you and uh, when I say help them uh, in lots of ways uh, I'm not trying to make the show get a little sloppy like he says but it's very very true uh, not just singers but he's always he, he's so a perfectionist mm -hmm. he always wants to do you know he wants things to be right and when you do something do it right be on time be uh, you know he can go on and carry on from what I'm saying but he's he's a super super person and the uh, He's, I know, he's a good friend, that's why I've got to tell you. You're my man, Fred. Freddie, I want to, uh, I want to thank you very, very much uh, for your call. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me get on the, on the line. Thanks thank a lot, you, Freddie. Freddie. Hello, this is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio. Hello, Bill Moran. This is Barry Manilow. A regular on our show. <laughs> my, my Sunday phone call, it wouldn't be complete anymore. Hey, I listened to you last week. What are you, what are you, are you still in Las Vegas? I'm still in, I'm still in Las Vegas. And uh, and we're having a terrific time. How are you? Hey, you know, I am so embarrassed. Now, this is something i got to do publicly that I've been wanting to do privately, but I've been just swept up, Barry, in a lot of dumb things. You know Susan Abramson? She works at our office, and she she told me a long time ago that Barry Manilow is going to do a vocal version of the bandstand boogie. Would that please you? I said, please me. i got to go out of my head. Uh -huh. Then I heard it, and it is extraordinary. I mean, uh, that... yeah, I, we haven't, well, I haven't spoken to you since we did it. I, I know, man. Have you heard it on the air? We finally decided that that's, you know, we got to use this for a closing theme. That I heard. That I was, I was jumping around. Me and my group were jumping around when that happened. 
You know, why, can I ask a dumb question? Because nobody in, in God's green earth has ever gotten too excited about that song. A couple of crazy people always want to say, wonderful guy called before, where can I get a copy and all of that? But why would you select that of all things? It was one of my favorite things. When I was growing up, that was one of my favorite little themes. You're not well, Barry. I know. <laughs> I think it's a terrific little jump number, you know. But for, for 25 years, I've been walking on stages, and the band will say, what's that theme song? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And then nobody can sing it. It's very obtuse. Man, I mean, I, I could never get it out of my head. It was, uh, you know, it was a standard as far as I was concerned. Uh, well, let me jump to another thing. Are you through with the engagement in Las Vegas? No, we don't close until Wednesday night. When it's, This uh, coming Wednesday. Well, this coming Wednesday night, yeah, and then uh, forgive then my, stu the law. I'm my stupidity. At the MGM Grand Hotel with Helen Reddy. I was going to say it's you and Helen, is it not? Me and Helen, yeah. What a nice yeah, deal. Great reviews too, by the way. I have them ready to be permaplaked or tattooed on your chest. Have you seen them? I guess yeah, somebody told me about them. They're oh. really, I hear they're really good. I haven't seen them yet. Phenomenal. No, yeah. they're they're really they say good things about you without the usual hype. <laughs> uh, but they, you know, obviously they liked what you did. Did you like the experience? Oh yeah. Listen, I didn't know what to expect when I was at it. My, my virginal experience out here. It's the first time for us. It's a little different from working at the Santa Monica Civic or some yes. other arena. Yes, you know. and much, much different. What is the uh, mixture primarily in the uh, in the audience? Uh huh. Is it what what type of mixture are you drawing? Uh, from all over the all over the country. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, something I've never been exposed to before, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's really very nice. Do it's older very nice. do older people, Barry, know what you're doing? Uh, eventually, eventually, we, I, I try to make it as clear as possible. I think I think a song like I Write the Songs can oh. relate to everybody. It's such yeah, a Yeah, that's really very, very simple, you know, it's very simple. We do, uh, we do the medley of my little commercials, you know, and everybody can sort of relate that's to that. That's wild, yeah. Yeah, that's standing ovation By the time way, in its own. There's a song in your album, which, is it Lean On Me, or... What's that? Yeah, on your current album, you've got a beautiful ballad. Is it Lean On Me or... No, Lay Me Down. Yeah. Lay Me Down. Yeah, that's Larry Weiss. I'm, I know I was close. Yeah, that's Larry Weiss's. That, I think that song... I, I think that song could be a big hit as a single. Isn't oh, Larry the guy that... It's a beautiful tune. I think Larry did a great, great... He wrote Rhinestone Cowboy. He's the fellow that wrote that's Rhinestone. Right. Well, he's going to be there Saturday night, as I understand you are, for the Music Awards. Uh, yes, I think I am. That's right. I sure hope so, old fellow, because I want to shake your hand and give you a little hit on the head for the boogie thing. Uh, great, Dick. <laughs> Barry, I'm really glad you like it. I'm really glad you like it because uh, I was wondering, you know. But I'm really uh, that's great because I love it. I'll, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not saying this because it's on the air. I I've been meaning to write you a letter and thank you personally because it's really uh, I don't know it's extraordinary. It's that's something great. I'll treasure. Barry, say hello to Helen Reddy and uh, hubby Jeff Wald, will you? Okay. And okay, we'll okay. we'll see you out at the awards. Okay. Thanks a lot, Bear. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Hi. Hi. Um, Bill, I wanted to tell you that my grandma's just in love with you. That she really enjoys your talk shows. Oh, well, thank you. I'm in love with your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> What is this, a marital service you're running with? Is this a love loan column you're running here today? But... Whatever. Do you have a question for Mr. Dick Clark? Yeah. Well, not a question exactly, but I'd like to tell him that I really like the American Bandstand. I mm -hmm. thank you. And I just recently started watching it, and I just enjoy it. Are you a record buyer? Well, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you a... Are you, well, let me put it another way. Do you listen to the radio and listen to music in your spare time? Yeah. Ask her a question. All right. Record of the year. If you were going to vote for a record of the year, would you vote for Captain and Tennille, Love Will Keep Us Together? You know that song, right? Yeah. Rhinestone Cowboy, Glenn Campbell, or Elton John's Philadelphia Freedom? Love will keep us together. Love will keep yeah, us together. That's, that's two out of about that's two. five, I guess. And one point. more. If you were voting for your favorite male singer, would it be John Denver, Elton John, or Neil Sedaka? I don't know. <laughs> about even? Okay. Hey, thank you, doll, for your call, and thank you, grandmother, too, will you? I'd like to ask you another well, uh, okay, question. Okay, go ahead. One more question. Go ahead. Have you ever read the Osmond book? I've read many books on the Osmonds. Which ones are, one are you talking about? By Paul H. Dunn. Uh, I honestly don't know, hon. I, I've read so many things, hardback and paperback, about the Osmonds that it's difficult for me. What was it? What was it about? It? Do you want to call to my attention? It's the official story of the Osmond family. Then I think that's probably one that I've read. I just didn't recognize the man's name. And it's really neat. And they're just the whole family, is just really neat. Okay, thank they you. They are an exemplary group in every way. Beautiful my dear. people. Thank you for your call. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with Dick Clark. Yes, I'd like to tell everyone listening about Dick Clark. Okay. My daughter had the pleasure of working for a perfect gentleman. Oh. And not too many in the industry, but he happens to be one of them. Well, and the thing that she has learned working for him, that the Mr. Clark would never leave the office without returning a call. If he were busy 
When someone had called, he would never leave without returning the call, no matter what time it was. Well, that's nice. Who was your daughter? Huh? Who, who are she you? She was your one... She was the flower child before the flower children were around. Who was that? Arlene. Oh, Arlene Perlman? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. yes Lovely so lady. I, I fell in love with her the first time I... Saw her. That's once good... in love with Amy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't see Wood Boys Market any longer. Oh, don't you live on Valley Meadow any? That's right. Uh -huh. You and I bumped into each other on yeah, occasion. We, did, we live right below you. Give yeah. my best to her, will you? Thank you so much. And thank much. you very much for calling. This is Bill Moran, and you're on KBC Talk Radio with a red hot Dick Clark. Yeah, hello, Bill. Yeah, Bill and and, and, and Dick. Uh, my name is Dave from Van Nuys, and you mentioned about an hour ago uh, about the improvisation improvisation on Melrose and. Uh, I just thought I'd mention I have no connection at all with the uh, alternative chorus uh, songwriter showcase, but I have a 19-year-old daughter who uh, has uh, presented her songs at you know through the showcase, and I think that's a tremendous outlet for uh, songwriters. They're not just interested in performers, but if anybody wants to present you know their songs and feel they have ability. They do audition, and you have to call 655. Uh, now, I have no connection at all. Okay, I, right. It's been real great to my daughter. She's 19 year old. 655-7780. Uh, That's John Brahaney and Len Chandler. 655-7780. And they audition there before they present them mm -hmm. at the improvisation. It's a great opportunity to discover what ability or lack of ability you may have. And thanks a lot for the happy four. I was, walk, was walking four miles. An hour and 50 minutes enjoying your program. It made it much, seem see, much shorter. Lots of luck to both of you, and thanks a lot. Thank thanks you. Thanks for calling. This is Bill Moran with KBC Talk Radio and Dick Clark. Hi. Hi. My name's Chris. Hi, Chris. I want to ask you if I remember there were eight members of war when they first started out, and I was wondering which one left. I'm somebody. Fire the question again. We didn't hear it. Um, his, there used to be eight members of war, and yeah. now there's only, um, Seven. Oh, hon, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that question, and I feel dumb because I should know. Oh, thanks anyway. I'm sorry. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, Dick Clark. On that happy note. See, you know, part of my problem, Bill, people think I can remember everything, and I can't. It's flits by. All I can think about is one week from last night, next Saturday night at 10 o'clock, and I'll we'll see you We'll be with you with the American Music Awards. Thank you, Dick. Next week, we'll be back with Olivia Newton-John right here on Talk Radio 79. And a reminder that coming up on future shows, we are going to have... Bing Crosby in studio. Mm. We are going to have Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet in studio. We're wow. going to have Mac Davis in studio. We're going to give all kinds of chances for people to meet the stars. So we'll see you next Sunday between 2 and 4 with Olivia Newton-John. You want a Winnebago? <laughs>